Welcome to Telling the Story. I will be your host, Tasha Goldberg. The way we tell our stories, both challenges and successes, can determine how we engage people, how we mobilize action. We have gathered some of the most influential and interesting storytellers to explore the spectrum of storytelling. Our first guest is Peter Bick. Peter has a clear vision of how we can improve the health of our planet. He has set out on a journey to share this vision through the power of film. And it has yielded incredible results that actually impact every single person on this planet. His films have inspired behavior change, improved ecosystems, and unlock millions in investments. We are incredibly lucky to be able to share with you now the world premiere of the trailer for his new film, Carbon Cowboys. My daddy talked more like foghorn leghorn than I do. Meet the farmers who will change the world. Uh, you know, it ain't easy to get a 60-year-old white dude to change. I am one of the good old boys that produced food industrially, and then I went commando. Well, this will be a very typical, conventionally grazed situation. They keep coming back to the exact same area day after day to graze. So we ended up with poor and poor pasture every year. And after 150 years of fighting nature, we only have 60 more years of topsoil left. Here's another neighbor, he hasn't really caught on. That moisture's gone, that's not gonna be able to be used for a crop, it's just really dry. And that soil has almost no carbon. It's those carbon molecules that feed soil life. We have to regenerate these soils and ensure that future generations can survive on those soils. Here's good news. A new way to graze rebuilds our soils fast. Okay, I'm going out to set up a temporary fence to make a small paddock. I can put one up and down a quarter of a mile in 18 minutes. We are rotating these cattle three or four or five times a day and try to mimic what the buffalo did. They would graze an area and keep moving and they might not return to that area for a year. We graze it and then we get the heck off of it. I saw that if you give this grass a chance to rest, it would grow and it would recover. Our pastures are better than they've ever been because we don't till them up, we don't use chemical fertilizers, we don't use pesticides. It's extremely low stress because we're working with nature instead of against it. It's a race against the clock to fix our soils. You know, we've been taught for a long time that the soil was what it was. We couldn't change it significantly in a human lifetime. Through adding livestock, we can change organic matter, you know, in 10 years. People are proving it all over the country. From short summers in Canada to long droughts in New Mexico, from brittle Kansas to lush Cornwall, this grazing works. The microbes feed the soil, and the soils feed the plants, and the plants feed the animals. It's really a beautiful system. And that is allowing these plants, as they're rapidly regrowing, to capture carbon out of the air, you know, and put it back into the soil. We went from three or four basic types of grasses. And now we have counted over 45. We found our first eastern gamma. It was like having a new grandchild. I've got more spare time on my hands. If I was to start this when I was your age, I would have had 15 kids by now because I spent so much time in the house. I personally am debt free, and a lot of it's because of the grazing. Money saved. Cha-ching. There's givers and takers, and I want to be a giver. I like to give back what I have taken, and I like to give it back. Something about this filming that made me like you more, love you more. It'll go away. It will go away. <laughs> It'll go away. I hope I'm not preaching too much. I'm just preaching off. I mean, I'm just fucking telling you. You're a preacher. I'm fucking doing this in my church. It's really an incredible story. 
You've said that healthy soil is the North Star for you. You could have taken a million approaches to telling this story. Why film? And how do you feel the method of filmmaking really has made this a success? I chose film, Tasha, because I'm a filmmaker. And it was when we made a, a film called Carbonation, which is just about 10 years old. We were looking for solutions to climate change that I was taught and then discovered the power of our soils to draw down carbon. And so film was just the natural way for me to express myself because that's, that's what I do. The interesting thing that's happened is this film series is, is 10 parts. And the first part was Soil Carbon Cowboys. We made that in 2013, 2014. And without any word of mouth, that film's been seen by over a million people around the planet. And it's changed the way farmers have farmed. We've been able to connect farmers who want to change with the farmers that we were filming. And it also helped us to put together a science team to understand what's going on with this type of grazing. Are, are, are the soils really drawing down carbon? What about the greenhouse gases and the water cycling and all that, all those details, all those natural elements? Are the Is nature coming to these farms and not coming to the conventional farms? And so we, we actually put together a science team and then we've put together a large science project. And so we've got a $6.3 million dollar project going on right now, studying these farms in the Southeast US. McDonald's, FAR, a lot of other funders have, are, are on board. And that short film, that first piece of this series uh, started it all. It's really so there's exciting. Some, there's some impact it's, for a short film. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one of the things I really appreciate is that we get to see sort of these unusual suspects for climate change champions, you know, the cowboys. Can you tell me a little bit about what it was like to yeah. produce a film where you were working with people that you didn't necessarily agree with on all things? Absolutely. Um, it was fantastic because it taught me that we don't have to agree on all things to get a lot done. In this country, in America, if you get 60% of the vote, you've won a landslide. Like Reagan's victory over Mondale in 2004, I'm sorry, in 19. 84, whoa, in 1984, that was a 58% vote that Reagan got. And that was a landslide. And so with these farmers, I can spend days with them. And we're talking about soil health. We're talking about rejuvenating their land, rejuvenating their, their, their rural economies. And we're not talking politics. I would guess, and I know actually pretty well, that I vote differently than most of the people that I've filmed. But we, we get along so well on what I think is one of the most important issues we've got going, which is our soils, which is actually a great problem for climate change and a great solution for climate change, that if we agree on that, that is enough. And um, so for me, I'm always looking for common ground. That's why this Earth Optimism program is so awesome. And, and what I've discovered is that the common ground I've been hunting for all these years is actually the ground. And so these farmers, we probably don't vote the same way, but we, we vote with our dollars the same way. And, and I consider these folks heroes. And they're not necessarily worried about climate change to a person, but they know things are changing. And so I don't even care if they are doing things for climate change. They're doing things for their own farm. They're, they're changing to regenerative grazing for their own income, for their own legacy for the land they leave to their children if their children want to farm. And that to me is essential because it has to be a good business decision for the farmer to actually do the regenerative practice or it will not happen. The good news is that the regenerative practice is really good for the farmer, really good for their community, really good for their land. And every farmer I've ever met cares deeply about their land and cares deeply about their community, right? And so it, it's a it's a win 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 for these farmers and for us. So now that you've gotten a chance to really work with these different cowboys, uh, and you created this beautiful film, and girls, who would you like to yep. know was really working or watching the films? What what would be your ideal audience if you could pick the group of people or person that would watch? I think when you meet filmmakers, you find out that their ideal audience is everyone. 
right? The, the, the worst thing that could happen to me is I make a film and my dog watches it in the living room. Um, I want consumers to watch these films because I want them to understand uh, where their food's coming from, just like the fellow from Costa Rica was just saying earlier. I want CEOs to watch these films because they all need to deal with their legacy carbon, all of them need to figure out how to draw down all the carbon their company has ever put up, just like Microsoft as a leader has just, has just announced two or three months ago. And so soils are a phenomenal way to draw down carbon. And we're working scientifically to figure out how durable that carbon is. Is it going to stay for decades and centuries? And we're figuring that stuff out, how to measure that, how to verify that. I would want farmers to watch these films because I am most concerned about farmers, period, around the world. And the American farmer, right now, the highest rate of suicide in the United States is the American farmer. And I think that's a crime. I think the fact that farmers and teachers get paid so little, they're in so much debt doing such an essential part, uh, essential service to our, to our culture, to our country, I think that's a crime. And so I want these farmers who are out there to figure out if they work with nature, if they start with nature, give nature a seat at the table, that they'll actually make more money and they'll be happier and they'll enjoy their work more and they can be creative. Um, so farmers are essential to this project. Um, scientists, there's a lot of doubt and skepticism about soil being a solution, a way to draw down carbon and store it properly. A lot of people focus on trees, which are essential. Uh, I am a tree hugger, no doubt. Um, but, but grasslands actually hold more carbon. And with the way forest fires are going around the world, grasslands might even be a more resilient way to store carbon. And then all the benefits in the grasslands. Um, so we need trees. We need grasslands. We need it all. We need regenerative farming. Um, those are the main audiences. And then I guess the most important audience would be moms. You know, just getting as many moms to watch this because they run the show. They know what's going on. And um, I'm luckily a product of a very strong and wonderful mom and my grandmother as well. So for them as well. Well, I cannot argue with that. <laughs> so tell us as we wrap up, I want to make sure everybody knows how they can continue to learn about these carbon cowboys, soil health, and be part of the conversation with you. Sure. Um, we're going to release our films. Most likely the big film is going to be released next Wednesday, April 29th. Uh, we're still having a little bit of debate on our team about, it, it, about that date. But our website is carboncowboys.org. And you can go there. You can watch the trailer you've just seen. You can share the trailer you've just seen. Uh, we're, we're on all the social platforms. Um, we want everyone on board. We want to help other groups. If you, if you feel that watching our film could help you raise money for your organization, the answer will be yes. If you can use our film in any way that's positive, that makes something better in your community, the answer is yes. This is a film that's free. It's made, it's funded by amazing people who want as many people to learn these things because we're all learning it as well. We're all learning. And, and so just more the merrier. It's a party. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter. If people would like to continue to ask you questions or comments, they can find you on your Twitter and Instagram. It's at Peter Bick and at Carbon Cowboys. So I'm gonna move over yep. to our next guest. So thank you for joining us.